All right, we're going to go a little fast here because we're going to focus in future screencasts on each one of these individual sections. But I thought it'd be nice to just go and do a very quick example so you can kind of see what's going on. So typically, you're going to start with the describe block here. And this is nothing more than a grouping. So maybe we'll do our test example as our name here. Now, you'll notice to the right, as I go and save this, we'll actually have a group here of test example. Now, within here, we'll have a it test. And we can just say something like returns true. This is actually going to define what a test does. It's going to be nested within our describe. Now, if we save this, look at this error that says, hey, spec has no expectations and returns for returns true right here. Within our it, we're going to have an expectation. We need to know what to expect. So if I say expect false to be, this is one of the matchers, and we'll dive deeper into that. But typically you have an expectation and then something to match it with. To be is basically saying this value is the same as this. To be true, what would you expect? Do you expect false to be true? Of course not, right? And it'll give us an error here. It says expects false to be true. However, in reality, when we would write some actual code where we expect true to be true, that makes sense. Now, oftentimes we're going to have something much more complex than this and actually going to be testing logic and not just putting true to true. That's not very helpful. But the typical flow of your test from start to finish is you have a group, you have a test, and you have an expectation for what that test means to pass. Now, we're going to dive deeper in this in future screencasts right now.